Welcome to People Analytics in Excel, Employee Attrition, a video series that provides an over-the-shoulder view of what a People Analytics project looks like in real life. This first video will describe the process by which we take a business problem and transform it into a useful business solution. Throughout the rest of the series, I'll actually conduct this analysis, taking you step by step through the analytical process. I'll begin with setting up the analytical environment using Microsoft Excel 365 and culminate in a set of actionable, easily understandable business insights. Consider the following scenario. It's a Monday morning and you walk into your boss's office. She informs you that turnover is high and it's hurting the company's bottom line financial performance. She needs you to figure out what the problem is and provide concrete recommendations to solve it. You naturally ask how she wants you to do that and what specifically she wants to know, to which she replies, you're the HR professional, it's up to you. I need answers by Friday. And she's right of course, so you agree to get it done, while thinking this might be a great time to update your resume. How in the world can you possibly provide an answer to this question that's any more rigorous than guesswork and assumptions? It's not as though you can read your employees' minds. So now it's just you and your trusty computer. You have a somewhat poorly defined business problem that can be summed up as attrition is bad, so fix it. And the question is how can you, as a data informed professional, provide a rigorous defensible solution to that problem? The answer begins with translating your business problem into a data problem, something that can be solved using rigorous, scientific, analytical methods. And that means looking at the data that's available and determining whether an analytical solution is even feasible to begin with, and if it is, how you can obtain the necessary data to solve it. For this project, we'll be using a data set generously provided by IBM. It is provided in a tabular format like a typical spreadsheet, as you can see here, where each row corresponds to an employee and each column is a variable describing the employee. This is similar to information you might reasonably expect to download from your HRIS or other HR software. We have 1,470 employees in this data set and a column labeled attrition that indicates whether the employee left the company in the last year. The other columns show us everything from how often the employees travel to their to their last performance ratings, to how long they've been with the company. As data informed professionals, we look at this data and say with confidence that we have what we need to build a model that will not only help us understand why our employees leave, but might even allow us to predict how likely they are to do so. With a solid understanding of our data, we can now translate our nebulous business problem into a far more specific and actionable data problem. Predict employee attrition using statistical modeling. Now we can finally begin our analysis. But we can't just wade into the fray aimlessly. The world of analytics is bewilderingly large and complex, and an undisciplined approach could easily eat up our whole week with nary a result to show for our efforts. Because don't forget, your boss wants this Friday. In the real world, just as in our scenario, we often work under tight deadlines that require us to deliver insights quickly to support key organizational decisions. We don't have time to waste randomly probing our data set for insights. The method we'll use has five steps. In the first step, we'll obtain our data. We may need to scrape it from a website, query it from a database, or simply download it in a tabular format from an information system or the internet. In our case for this project, we'll download a CSV document, which is a tabular format, from the internet. The bottom line is, you need data to do analytics, so the first step is get some data. Next, we'll scrub the data. Analysts often refer to data as being either clean or dirty, which are euphemisms for how ready data is for actual analysis. Algorithms are mercilessly picky, and we have to prepare our data properly before we can feed them into models and achieve usable results. So in this step, we deal with missing values, outliers, inconsistent data formats, errors, duplicated values, and all the other little inaccuracies and inconsistencies that plague data analysis. At the end of this step, we have data that's ready for modeling. Before we model, however, we must first explore our data. In this step, we generate charts, plots, and graphs so we can understand the relationships between our variables. We also generate lots of simple statistics here like means, medians, variances, and correlations. These help us neatly summarize our data and describe it to ourselves and to others. A great blog post I read once described this step as rolling around in the data, and that's precisely what this should feel like. 
In this step, we engage in a simultaneously playful and serious exploration of our data, always mindful of how our discoveries will impact the analysis to come. Now we're finally ready to model our data. This is the most technical step of the entire analytical endeavor. In this project, I'll walk you through the process of implementing a logistic regression to classify employees and understand why they choose to leave the company. At the end of this step, we'll have a sophisticated model that we can use to deeply understand our employees' behavior, while enabling our organizational leaders to make well-informed decisions. However, we must always keep in mind that these models are highly technical and are not understandable to a general audience in their raw form. Therefore, in the final step, we interpret our results, taking the outcomes from our model and translating them into plain English to help drive organizational decision making. When it's all done, we'll have taken a tough problem and found a solid, pragmatic approach to solving it. It's not without reason that this approach is called the awesome framework. When it's all said and done, you return to your boss and report specific, data-informed recommendations that will save the company money and maybe even improve the quality of the workforce. Your boss gratefully acknowledges your excellent work, puts you in charge of implementing your recommendations, promotes you, maybe even gives you a raise. Or maybe she just gives you a firm handshake. Either way, you've done your job well and established your value as an HR and data professional. I hope you'll watch the rest of the videos of this series as I demonstrate the nitty gritty of implementing everything I just described. Although it certainly isn't required, I highly recommend that you follow along with me throughout the series. All you need to participate is an internet connection, Microsoft Excel, a reliable computer, and a desire to answer difficult questions using data. I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365 for this project, but if you have a different version you should still be able to follow along without too much trouble. If you have any trouble or don't understand something, or you just want to share your ideas, feel free to reach out on the People Analytics Alaska groups on either Facebook or LinkedIn. I look forward to seeing you in our social media groups as we take this analytics journey together. Happy learning!